This is my own property. Daga Shuga Bank Asa. Shake your Suntara, Fintri Suntara, Sun Ajay. What a Kebe Sani Baba left in Sabanishima. His Excellency Besani Bona Namune. Ganima Mukaya Mune Akabamu, Mujem and Machin Kayana, Mujem, 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 Paga Kayana. Kayana pay you and Zuna Samu. As one Jima Kumana Garada was a winner who can I am. Abu Bare talk. And we were talking about the whole looting of the COVID-19 policies. It was a very, very interesting discourse, and that's the reason why we said that uh, we're going to continue it uh, in the course of the week. And what today we're talking about the, you know, looting of individuals, uh, shops, um, offices, as well as you know, government uh, places, and that's what we'll be focusing on today. Now, you know, we've seen a lot of looting videos like a lot of them and some of them you know when you look at those videos or you're watching those videos you're like like the mindset of some persons who would just go and then take people's things and whatnot and you know in some of these videos that we have seen that's been going around uh, you hear people say it is my possession i mean i'm possessing <laughs> my possession you hear people say this is my national cake you know so it is time for me to enjoy it, you know. What, what, what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, these videos that we've been seeing going around with uh, people who have been, you know, looting, um, you know, people's shops and also their office spaces and whatnot gives? Okay, you know, um, right now everybody's complaining about hunger, poverty, and the rest, and then you want to loot, and then you look for people, like average Nigerians like you, people that struggle to actually own a shop, they worked hard for their businesses, you know, and then you, you look from them and then call it your national cake or whatever you call it. I think at that, I think that particular, that particular, that particular uh, thing is actually really wrong when you steal from the poor. You know, imagine someone that is managing um, his or herself and then you say your national cake and then you loot from him or her. Come on. You know, I think it's, it's not good at all. It's really, really bad. All right. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, it's a very bad one. You know, looting from those that are struggling to survive, it's not a good idea. On on the first note, looting from the warehouses and some big, big places like that, I think I like the fact because through those looting, we discovered that some COVID-19 palliatives were still kept. But going down to um, looting some shops and all that, you know, I don't go with that idea. It's not good at all because now, right now, we are leaving a lot of Nigerians jobless at the moment. And you know, unemployment is one of the basic issues in Nigeria. So now you are increasing the rate of unemployment. All right, let's just show you a clip of uh, you know an agonized um, you know Nigerian who is basically angry at the fact that her shop was burnt and also her, uh, the goods were also being looted. Our food plenty, food plenty, plenty, plenty. Food plenty. Our food plenty for dear. A warehouse of 600 feet by 600 feet, full of COVID-19 products, was discovered today. Look at people struggling to pass. This, pro this incident has been going on since 7 a.m. As I speak with you, sources say the warehouse has not gone off. Palliative that was supposed to be given to people during the COVID-19 period was hidden away Nigerians in, were in a warehouse. And Nigerians were dying of hunger and starvation. Look at this man struggling to survive. Yes. Can you imagine? Look at him. Something, for all of us. something that is supposed to be brought to his, where, they to his home. This thing for the past two hours. Look at it. You mean? Can you imagine? Nigeria has more than enough. The Navy 
Nigeria has collected their own. The armies have put their truck, collected their own. Immigration, custom, last month. And the warehouse has not gone half. The warehouse has not gone half. The warehouse has not gone half. All right, I'm still talking about looting of uh, people, you know, shops, house, um, shop space, you know, and also offices and also government property. Uh, you know, like, it's, it's really worrisome to see that um, you decided to be enter as protest and then it just degenerated into COVID-19. Palliative uh, warehouse looting, mm -hmm. then also, you know, people's um, shops, offices. You know, a lot of people have been rendered um, jobless as a result of this. And you know, one of the things that even makes it even more sad is the fact that I saw um, a video of um, a tractor being dismantled, like it was, you know, destroyed into pieces, and people just started taking some who carry tires, some who carry the hand. You know, different things. I'm like, okay, what exactly? Do you want to use these things for? Is it just a case of oh, let us just let us just you know so that people don't have access to these things again, or what? What exactly do you think about the gift? You know, it it has you know it has gone. This whole thing has gone out of hands. It has come out of hands because this whole thing started as a peaceful uh, protest, peaceful protest. Let's let's fight for our right. Let's fight for for good governance. And then it has, and then along the line, it just went out of hands, mm -hmm. out of hands. We imagine somebody now the tractors that people were busy dismantling and taking tire, take care, take care. Of course, you cannot do anything with it. You can't even say you want to sell it because at this, at this point, nobody is even ready to buy anything. So I, to, I would I would say that to be I would, I would say that that is actually just an act of wickedness, mm -hmm. an act of wickedness because at this and, and then it's high time this thing actually as you, as you, we need a measure right now to control this thing we need to control this thing it's getting out of hand because very soon they will start breaking into people's homes yeah. you will be in your house sleeping one day and they will break into your house and they will loot maybe your clothes. That they may not even wear at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Speaking about looking at the clothes, but then, uh, uh, Agnes, let me ask you now. We saw a video, there was a video of like, you know, a doctor who stole like medical equipment worth about two billion naira. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is now, these things that you took. Is it not so obvious that when you're going to be using these things that wherever you want to use them or where if you're going to eventually try to sell them out, wouldn't it be obvious that these things were stolen? Because how do you have access to such expensive equipment? Especially if you're maybe you you look like you're still trying to yeah, you're still trying to struggle and then build yourself. How how exactly do you think that uh, that would work around? Yeah, it would be very obvious that the doctor stole it. On Alex is going to distribute it to the people that are in need of it. If not going out to sell it, it will be very obvious. You know, the looting is not something that is just being done in a particular state. It's going round and it's already viral. A lot of people are aware of it already. And it's on the social media platform, you get it. So you going to um, loot something worth two hundred and um, two billion. So unless you are going to distribute it to those that are in need of it, if not going to sell it, uh, it will be very noticeable. Yeah, and you know, during the periods of this whole thing thing going on, uh, we had issues of, uh, you know, <laughs> I remember during the protest in, in particular, we had um, issues of, you know, prison yards, uh, they call them correctional centers now, yeah. uh, they were being, the fire would start and the next thing we hear inmates, especially the one that happened in Benin, yeah. where, you know, about how many inmates, all of them ran out of the prison and you know they're coming out and even the governor had to give like an ultimatum asking the prisoners to come back that one was really a very very funny scene because mm -hmm. i mean how do you get it so exposed to that level where you know now these prisoners have they they, they ran out of the prison and they are asking them to come back how do you get these people to come back i mean people, some you know there are cases of people who we definitely know that these people maybe were, were just taken into these places uh without they are like more like innocent people and there are also people some of them who are like hiding criminals who you know these ones have done very heinous activities before they got into that place and now you know there's this fear of okay what's going to happen now that these people are on the loose gift obviously nigeria let me let me just um let me just let me just stay in nigeria nigeria is not safe anymore 
the streets are not safe anymore. In fact, your compound is not safe anymore because you don't know who is who. Yes, in the prisons we have we have people that probably are innocent, maybe caught uh, framed, and they, they end up in prisons. But then, what about those people that are hiding criminals, murderers, thieves? Do you understand? These people are actually loose. They're on the streets. Not yet. No, I, I, I don't know what will happen with that, but I don't want to say, but I know the height of corruption, the height, the level of killings, kidnappings, you know, every bad thing at this point will just, will just increase. Because, of course, those criminals come on, have been caged in a place for maybe for months or for years or for weeks, and for the first time here, I have freedom, and they're asking me to come back. They will not go back. The chances of these um, uh, prisoners going back to prison is very, very slim. They will not go back. And then, I want for anything is you will not say, I'm going to say, Rolf is a criminal. Or he, or he was uh, a convict. No, you can't judge like that. So these people are everywhere. They are everywhere in the street. And of course, the street is not hotter than the world hot. All right, let's just uh, uh, let's just see. Um, let's talk about uh, these individuals now. Now, you know, there are, there are people who have come out to say that you know some of these lootings are political motivated. Understand that maybe there's somebody somewhere who is probably angry that he didn't win maybe an election or maybe this is like towards 2023 and they're like okay why don't we just spoil everything for people you know and you know so because of that you know these things happen to like individuals you see all those things but then I don't know do you really think that uh, people should be be you know people should be like the brunt of you know this kind of action i mean it wasn't their fault that uh, you know uh, people are experiencing police brutality i mean if i start my business with uh, my personal money do you understand and i didn't get support from anybody whatsoever and i have grown that business to a stage do you think that someone somewhere should even loot my shop free uh, agnes no i don't think someone should loot your shop the thing is that you know, some people, to me now, those answers, a lot of people are using the opportunities, those who All right, let me just hold you on there, and let's let's see a video of uh, someone who had her shop on, so okay. just stop on. Hello? Hello? Eh? Mo, I need to be I need to be I need to shop me. Eh? Ah, go buy it low. Eh, what the shop me go go anymore? What fun? Me come over with Mujade. Fun, fun. Eh, eh, mo wan be, mo wan be sha. Okay. Eh, okay. Mo kan so mo kan soft man. Okay, no wa la sha. Eh, no wa la. Kosi ya come be mo. Kosi ya come be mo. Kosi anything. Kasha Madupen. Kasu Alasha. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for all of you that called us yesterday to uh, support us. Yes, all the shops were broken into. The one at Lekki was totally vandalized and looted by heavily armed guys in their hundreds with weapons, heavy weapons. So even the security couldn't beat them. At the end of the day, they looted everything, carted it away, goods in the millions, goods in the millions. And the security couldn't face them. They had to run for their lives. Overnight again, we had the situation at Surulere, uh, Adel Rokosoya. Everything in both shops were taken away. Somebody sweat. Don't forget we are in this together. I just want to let you know, all those looters out there, looting people's sweat we are in this together and then you feel the next thing is to go and attack innocent hard-working nigerians people know the way i walk that i do not walk like a woman i walk hard and i walk like a man that's my sweat i do not walk with sweat i walk with my blood how do you feel this morning that you've taken everything away it's not going to break me even the bible says in the book of john job 
though he slays me, yet will I praise him. My praises to God Almighty, when I had yesterday, I started praising God and dancing because this is the beginning of my upliftment. This is not going to break me down. It is going to lift me up in the name of Jesus. Amen. I am coming strong and I am coming stronger. How do you feel this morning? All of you that looted yesterday and the one that threw Larry overnight. God is still on the throne. Amen. If you think you've done your worst, God Almighty is watching you. Maybe you were able to sleep overnight. How do you feel this morning? You feel good. Continue. Well done. But for you to think you cutted my blood away like that, God is going to find you out. But as for us, we rise again. Yeah. We want a new Nigeria. And we're going to get it. Yeah. All those hijacking everything, God is going to find you out. And when this Nigeria will be better, we will be well and alive with our children. Yeah. But you will be nowhere to be found. Mark my words. Mm? Because that, those things you took away, my blood, not sweat. And don't forget, there are people working there. And even their families relying on the salary they get. You've rendered every one of them jobless now, for now. But God no go shame us. Huh? Yeah. We move it is well. Thank you. Right, seeing that video is so disheartening, you know, like seeing people who and the other woman was so you know, she was just trying to console herself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there will be other opportunities and then she'll be able to rebuild her business and stuff. But then, you know, this is not going to be the same story for a lot of people because uh, if you operate a, a let's say a shop where that shop is like the life wire of your house. That shop is where your children feed the home is being, you know, being taken care of from yeah. that shop and something like that happens to you. It's something that you'd be very devastated. Even, you know, there are issues, people are even, you know, there, there are a lot of people saying things like some people will be in, you know, this complete long-term depression that they might not be able to come out of it for a long time. Yeah. And some might even have, you know, might still be in shock to you now because imagine, because I saw a video, and I saw, there's another video that I saw of a young girl who just just tie her cream line mm -hmm. and uh, she just started the business like two months back mm -hmm. and she just ordered for some new uh, products. products and you know these products were delivered like the week before the curfew and the whole mm -hmm. protest thing you know happened and then you know only for her to come to her shop and see that the whole place was burnt down she couldn't even pick up anything now because when I saw the video she was just crying and she was so you know she was not you, you, nobody could even console her really because and i don't blame anybody because uh seeing that it's something that you started with your own money mm -hmm. and looking at the current situation of the country the fact that um, people basically cannot even get jobs and then the one you try to create for yourself now is burnt you know and this is this whole thing brings me down to my question of uh you know brt buses really have helped in making uh, our transport system uh, sort of easy, easy yeah. you know very easy to an extent that you know if you can't take the downfall bus you would opt for you know the okay. BRT bus now a good number of those buses were bond now uh, doing my survey like as I yesterday I, saw, I noticed that a lot of people that were going towards like places like Ikorudu which is like one of the main places where you have to take like a BRT bus to uh, they were held up at the bus stop for a long time why because there's not enough bus that will take them from wherever they are going to and taking the downfall bus is a lot more expensive than you know when you have to take the BRT bus now some people have to spend close to eight to ten hours before they get to the next day and this time in itself would have been better out spent maybe doing something more mm -hmm. you know valuable yeah. or doing uh, doing something you know more useful yeah. uh, what do you think about it uh gift uh, yeah the uh the the, the issue of them burning of the burning of brt bus is something that i am strongly strongly against because like you rightly said this brt bus is has been very helpful you know to the average nigerians because you know we want when we take a normal down for bus to a far distance you know you pay more but with the brt bus you pay 
cheaper, like way, way cheaper, like 100 naira, 150 for a very, for a distance where it's supposed to be like 500 or 1000 or 700. Do you understand? So, putting on that, those buses is something that I think, I, to me, I feel that that was actually a wrong move because we are fighting for us. The fight is for us. And you're fighting for us and you're killing us. You want us to have a better life. You want us to have to live happy and live very comfortably in the country but then you are destroying those small means that we at least we feel to be comfortable around mm. do you understand like this BRT is burning down of um, sh uh, shops offices where people are working we want good life you're putting down that particular shop where one girl is managing to say as a salesperson uh, or as a cleaner and then she earns small money for which that, that she fits with now what are we doing this whole protesting was for us but right now i don't know if it is still for us because i i just feel uh um uh, hoodlums actually hijacked this protest and they are destroying the people that the, the real protesters were out to protect so the burning down of the brt buses ah it was a very very bad one all right, let's look at, uh, you know, with all these whole looted areas, you know, some of the places where, you know, people would even literally, you know, get justice were born. For example, the High Court was born. Yeah. And this is where, you know, like the way I, would, I, want, I want to say it in the way uh, some of these uh, uh, skit producers would say, my lord, if I may, may I. Yeah. Do you understand? <laughs> these are places where these people go there to basically defend people who have been accused of any crime or uh, they have one or two litigations or something to face over there and now this place is burnt. And so now, already we can see that a number of cases will not get you know, will not get judged on time. Uh, people who are supposed to, you know, get their case being heard, you know, in court, mm -hmm. there's no story on that one now. And another thing is, we have the issue of data in this country, like, you know, putting up people's data mm -hmm. together. Now, with all those places being born now, how do you, you know, make your claims to some of the, you know, evidences that might have been provided in court and say, okay, this is what was provided for so 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 case and all these kind of things. So you see, you, you, you can see that it has moved us back in yeah. a way, like where we've retrogressed in a way, like in terms of our, uh, 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 in terms of our security, yeah. in terms of securing of lives and properties, mm -hmm. even people that were hoping basically that they would be able to get. Um, and we'll be able to get justice. justice. Mm -hmm. Now they cannot get justice. What do you think about that, um, Agnes? Yeah, I, like what Gift said, that we don't really know. I know it's not really coming from the protesters, it's from the hoodlum, but we don't really know if the protest now is for us or against us. Because we are really, we are really going back. Like all these things happening now, it will take years again in some it to take years in some instances for us to be able to recover them back imagine a lady do you know how long she has saved that money to get a shop like and get products other them and now so she has to go ladies, back no yes yeah because the video we, i watched was for a lady but okay sorry let me generalize it now imagine those that have shops do you know how long it took them some some persons could go to the extent of getting loans to open those shops That's and enough. now yes and now you are taking them back how are they going to come up how are they going to pay back those loans they collected so we are really really going back the idea of all this looting is not a is not a good idea at all it's a very bad one seriously okay i don't know if you you guys heard of uh, you know some psychiatric patients mm -hmm. giving their work i'm i'm sorry but you know when, when, when you see some of all these things happen you, you just don't want to laugh because yeah. it's, it's sort of laughable it's just sort of laughing because you're like, no, this this should not be happening, really. No, you know, so pre um, the correctional centers, a lot of inmates mm -hmm. of uh, psychiatric wards. Uh, we had a lot of um, you know psychiatric patients of. Now, how do we get these people back? <laughs> It is a very big a question. Very question. Yeah. Because I don't know because of course the person the, the the psychiatric patients out there, some of them know that you've confined them in a space where they are not able to move. They are, you know, restricted. 
and they found um they found the opportunity to you know to go where they can go by themselves and nobody is stopping them or putting them in a straight jacket yeah. to you know i don't know if they actually use straight jackets here or because yeah. <laughs> you know, but then you know you've gotten to that level of where you see all those kind of things happening and then you're wondering like do you think that you know these people would even allow themselves get back into that system especially mm. if it's a place where they're not even being treated well mm. they're not even giving them good food mm -hmm. or you know things like that what do you think about it Gil? of course of course those people eh will never they have their way to run and bury themselves in a, in a home where they will never be caught again they will do it because they want this freedom i think it's time where you, when you see somebody coming you just have to start running yeah yeah, if you see somebody coming over, just start running mm -hmm. because you don't know if that person might not be a mad person. Yeah, because that's how, that's that's how we are going to. That's the kind of uh, society we live in right now. Society where what is somebody coming and laughing or smiling or making a call with an with an with, as in wearing a headphone or an earpiece making a fan smiling, just start running because that person might be a mad person. That's mm -hmm. the kind of society we are right now. And of course, those psychiatric patients will not on their own willingly really come. The one that, that that might that might as in maybe you try to come back maybe you may, let me say no home to stay no no shelter over their hair no housing maybe no good food for them out of hunger ah no choice let me just go back but those that have that can hustle themselves and stay home do anything of course they will never go back and then I saw a video one time where somebody was riding a bicycle you know riding a bicycle and a madman just saw him picked a stone and hit him on the head maybe he died or not yes that's what that's what happened so you could be walking on the street and madman will just see you pick one stone and hit you on the head and you are gone so these protesters what are we doing to ourselves what are we the question now is what are we doing to ourselves you that even release those psychiatric patients if I broke on the street one day, God forbid, one will pick a stone and hit on your head and you will die. So what are we doing to ourselves? You are taking this thing the wrong way. All right, let's look at the, you know all these infrastructures that were being burnt down and uh, how they are going to be replaced by the government. Now, you know, before now, the 2021 budget was already in motion. They were thinking of how they're going to basically you know put it out there. And now that this has happened, it has cost a lot of, okay, let's go back to the drawing board and see what, you know, what um, changes that we can make, you know, that kind of thing. And I saw that... Um, uh, Senta Pajabi Amila was saying something that it was going to cost uh, uh, one trillion naira to rebuild, you know, Lagos because of you know all the infrastructures mm -hmm. that has gone burnt and everything. Now, uh, <laughs> looking at what has really happened, uh, how can we really move on? Because now we are into you know serious debt, like serious debt. Like we've been borrowing a lot of money, like abroad we have we're owing so much now how can we now you know use this how can we you know move on from where we are now mm. because uh, it's a serious situation how do you borrow money to repair or how do you you know use money to repair Lagos and then you keep still borrowing it's a lot of question in our mind what do you think about it uh, Agnes mm. Mm. it's going to be a very hard one to me let me say it will still take the grace of God because it will not be easy for us to to replace all those things that we that have been spoiled. You know, you know we are owing, and you still going back to borrow. Who is going to lend you the money? Everybody is trying to survive in the country now. So who is going to borrow um, Lagos the money for them to be able to replace those things? So it's going to take the grace of God, like Aelia said, for us to go to be able to replace those things that have been spoiled. And, and let me add to what she just said. You know, you know, uh, one of the uh, biggest means of actually um, getting an income is through business. Yeah. And now with all these um, uh, damages, fighting, killings, gunshots, uh, gunshots rather, and the rest that's happening everywhere. Of course, it's, this the whole thing drives away a uh, business investors. Those people yeah. that might want to come to Nigeria to partner with us in Nigeria, it is driving them away. And the, and the whole economy is just dwindling by the day. So now, talk, I'm talking about rebuilding, it's very easy to scatter something. You know? To spoil something is very, very easy. But then to rebuild what has been um, spoiled is very, very hard. So 
Lagos State, for, for instance, rebuilding the damage is going to take the grace of God. All right, you know, uh, during this routine process mm -hmm. going on, uh, the, you saw, if you saw some of those videos, you see um, security operators that's like the police, you see their van parked, and they were, you know, some of them were even helping uh, the looters mm -hmm. to take this, their lootings away, uh, and then, you know, they didn't even stop. We even saw some persons, some of the security officials that were even parking for themselves. Uh, what do you think about it? Because it really shows that, uh, you know, I, I there's something I hear when we say uh, the people, the people um, get the kind of um, people they put in power. Do you get the point yeah. exactly? So what do you think about that? You know, like uh, yes, I've seen videos too of the. I've, I've seen I've seen videos where you know those in uniforms uh, were you know caught you know actually taking uh, actually joining the uh, people to you know loot things. But then what I've seen so far is the palliative. That's the one I know I've seen, so I will not say what I don't know or I have not seen. So what I've seen is them actually taking palliative. Of course, them, they are humans and they are hungry. Yeah. These people are also hungry and that's why they're doing what they do. We are not justifying it, but them, I've not seen them loot from personal stores so far. So it's just a palliative that they are collecting, which is, of, which, of, which is of course part of the national clique. Yeah, and to add to what mm. Kate said, you know, those people, it might be that all of them are uniform persons, they are working. But mind you, the way they, they earn their money differs. So it might be that the other ones are they are hungry. So you go for what is your national cake according to what some person said. Cool. The palliative, they are a national cake, so you go for it and get your share. Mm. Okay, now during this routines that has been going on, really, you know, we've seen reports of you know some persons have died mm -hmm. as a result of you know stampede. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like people trying to go in all at once and get what they can get, you know. And some people use this opportunity to even stab people, you know. So it is very, very sad to see that even at the level of where you're trying to take your your uh, national uh, national or possess your possession. <laughs> Even at that point of where you're trying to possess your possession, really, and then people are still stabbing people, mm -hmm. you know, what do you think about that, Agnes? I think a lot of people, you know, in a situation like this, we have different type of people. A lot of people come out with different mindsets. Some people, are, they might just be there, not really to get their food or to get the palliative, but on another mission. That's just it. If not, you see where there is a free food. Instead of you to go get your own and leave, you are on a mission to kill somebody else. That's a very bad intention. So to me, in as much as there are lootings and other things, if you are going there, please be careful. Because you know now, we are saying that they, they release those that are insane. You don't know if those people that are stabbing people are part of those people that they released. So we never can tell. Yes. We never can tell. Maybe they are part of those people. Because I will see no reason why the normal people are going to get food and somebody else is going there to kill another person that is trying to survive. And don't forget that those those uh, people that are coming, we have mad people. Yeah. We have criminals. Yes, a lot of them. So anything so, can happen right now. Okay. All right, we pray for the souls of those that, uh, you know, uh, got, you know, people who died as a result of this whole and then, stampede and, you mm -hmm. know, during their trying to get their possessions, as that. well as also the uh, people who got involved in the lucky shootings. Mm -hmm. We hope that uh, they rest in perfect peace because we mm -hmm. do not want to see a country where, you know, strife and violence is the order of the day. It's mm -hmm. not something that anybody really wants. Mm -hmm. And on that note, we bring it to the end of our, our discussion at the canal today. Uh, uh, remember to equally like, share, and subscribe on all our social media platforms showing on your screen. And remember to also check our website www.bangadengel.com to find out more of our top stories. Till we come your way next time. I remain precious Tripudi, and I have my co-host Agnes Joy Uloko. My second co-host. And gift mark. Don't forget, dialogue can settle these things. All right, dialogue can settle everything. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching. Hello? Hello? Eh? Mo wa ni bi fagba yen. Ni bi fagba yen, bi fagba yen, bi shop mi. Eh? Ah, bo bo e ti lo. Eh, wa di shop mi gogo ni mo wa. Fan ni, kon mo ri mu jade. Fan, fan.
Eh, much for all of you that called us yesterday to uh, support us. Yes, all the shops were broken into. The one at Lekki was totally vandalized and looted by heavily armed guys in their hundreds with weapons, heavy weapons. So even the security couldn't beat them. At the end of the day, they looted everything, carted it away. Goods in the millions. Goods in the millions. And the security couldn't face them. They had to run for their lives. Overnight again, we had the situation at Surulere, uh, Adenro Gusoya. Everything in both shops were taken away. Somebody sweat. Don't forget we are in this together. I just want to let you know. All those looters out there. Looting people's sweat. We are in this together. And then you feel the next thing.